Uh, welcome to lesson number 32 <coughs> of the course on industrial automation and control. In this le lesson, we will uh, mainly be looking at, not mainly, solely be looking at DC motor drives. Now, we have seen that actually drives are very, very uh, important components of automation because they, they create motion and creating motion is extremely important for industrial operations both in the process industry as well as in the manufacturing industry. For example, uh, if you take the manufacturing industry, then uh, you need, this is the whole of manufacturing operation. We have just, we have done in the previous lecture some uh, giving you some exposure to CNC machines, which are various kinds of metal cutting machines. You have seen that very precise motion is to be created in those machines. The either the block or the tool, either the job or the tool have to be moved in precise, uh, precisely from one coordinate to the other. So that is one kind of example, then there is a big example of material handling. So, all material handling devices require you to create motion. Similarly, in the process industry, you require pumps which will uh, create flow. You require control valves. So, for their operation also, you need to create motion. So, create, creating of motions uh, is very important. So, we will, we are, in most cases, motion is generally, uh, generally rotational motion is created by a motor because it is very convenient. In a, in a small space, you can create that motion and then using various kinds of mechanisms, uh, this motion is converted into various other kinds of motions like linear motions, etc. So, we are going to look at creation of, basically creation of rotational motion using motors and we start with DC motors because they are still widely used and they are, uh, they are the simplest kinds of motors which are uh, used to create motion and lot of application was there. Now, some of the applications are being replaced by AC motor drives, but still a lot of them exist and it is a proper point to start the discussion on drives. So, in this we will mainly be considering, we will first we have an introduction like we are having now. And then we will look at two kinds of, you know, we are basically in this lesson, we are basically going to see how, what is the technology, how exactly, what is the engineering of these drives, how exactly these uh, motors are rotated, uh, sometimes they are accelerated, sometimes they have to be decelerated, they have to stop, start, they have to move clockwise, counterclockwise. So, how all these motions are basically created, the technology part of it not the analysis part of it. You have already seen some part of analysis of uh, DC motor control in the context of a CNC machine in a previous lesson. So, in this lesson, we are mainly concerned with seeing how in a motor you can create various kinds of motion. So, we look at two kinds of this creation of motion since are, these are electric motors. So, they create, so they require uh, uh, various kinds of electronics, power electronic devices and circuits. So, we are going to look at two broad classes of uh, circuits, one are line frequency converters and switch mode DC DC converters, uh, which are, which will show you two different ways of uh, controlling DC motors. Let us look at the main instructional objective of this course. So, after learning the lesson, the student should be able to describe the main features of a DC motor, basically should be able to understand how it works. Then should be able to draw block diagrams of various DC motor control loops to be able to identify uh, how the DC motor is excited, how feedback is obtained, etcetera. And then they will be able to explain the basic ways in which a 
uh, line frequency controlled, uh, uh, basically line frequency AC to DC converters for how they are used for DC motor control. And finally, they will they will also understand the except of a you know the there is a concept of four quadrant operation of motors. So that is very important in uh, for uh, drives to understand. Then, lastly, they will be able to explain the operation of a switch mode DC DC converter based DC motor control. So. In other words, he will be able to have a basic idea of how uh, DC motor uh, speed is controlled. Coming to the introduction, as I said that DC drives are still used very widely because initially DC drives were, uh, you know, DC, the goodness of DC drive base is basically uh, basically derived from two things. It basically derived from the principle of operation of the DC motor. So, in the DC motor, uh, as in fact, the advantages and disadvantages both derive from the principle of operation of the DC motor. So, in the DC motor, one good thing is that the, uh, the flux or the flux created by the armature current and the flux created by the field current are, are always perpendicular. So, they, they are always orthogonal and they, they generate good, the actually the best torques for their values. So, what happens is that you get, you get very good dynamic performance. But on the other hand, to be able to maintain these torques that way, you have to have a, you have to have a mechanical arrangement of what are known as brushes and commutators. So, it is this brushes and commutators which on the other hand create the basic uh, disadvantage of DC drives which, arri uh, which arises because of the fact that the sizes of the motors become more and their maintainability becomes uh, bad especially in industrial environments. And it is also seen that because of the, I mean it is a DC motor is basically uh, very simple to control the electronics required which was a consideration sometimes back uh, was, was, was quite simple compared to AC motors. Now, this situation as we will see in the subsequent lectures have changed and now you have other kinds of motors which essentially operate like DC motors that is they can, uh, they also inherit that goodness of uh, DC motors that the fluxes are always at, always perpendicular or nearly perpendicular. But they do not have this disadvantage of the brush com and compared to that they have more complex electronics which is becoming more and more acceptable with the uh, development of the field. So, basically these are you know in a, in a, in, so in a different way we will see that drives which require good dynamic performance must essentially behave like conventional DC motor drives, but without some of its disadvantages. But still even today we you have a good amount of DC drives here. So, uh, they are as I mentioned that they are difficult to maintain due to brushes and commutators especially in the industrial environment and they also create electromagnetic noise because of sparking sometimes which may, may not be acceptable. Typically people use separately excited or permanent magnet machines, permanent magnet machines are used because they are lighter. And, and because of the fact that there is a, there's a lot of interest in permanent magnet machines now because of the advent of good, very good quality magnets, it is now possible to use rare earth magnets like uh, cobalt samarium and get very good torques in very small and volumes and light weight. So, permanent magnet motors are of interest. So, either we use separately excited or permanent magnet machines for these drives. And Generally, line frequency controlled AC DC converters, as, as we have seen, that there are two kinds of drives. One are called adjustable speed drives, where speed adjustments are necessary, but essentially the steady state performance is of concern. Transient performance is not of concern, as we have seen in our previous lessons, where we saw that very considerable energy savings are possible uh, if you use an adjustable speed drive for. Uh, things like pumps, fans, blowers, etcetera. 
On the other hand, there are other kinds of drives like we have seen in the case of CNC machine controls that you need very good performance to ensure uh, exact manufacturing dimensions. So for those kinds of drives, you need exact position control and transient response is of great importance. So these are called servo drives. So for different kinds of electronics are used for this kind of, uh, these kind of machines. Uh, so we will see two typical uh, kinds of electronics or power electronic converters used for DC motor control in these two applications. One are called line frequency control DC DC converters or switch mode DC DC converters. So as I was saying that let me begin with this is a cross section of a motor you can see you can see this yoke on which there are poles. So in this machine there are two pole pairs one this north and so you have this is and, and flux will flow typically like this. So these are typical flux lines in the motor. Similarly, and so this is a two pole pair mo uh, motor. This is the armature, and from the armature you get a cylinder out, which is the set of commute copper strips called commutator segments. Each of these commutator segments are actually connected to these coils. These are the coils. So you have long coils which are on one side connected to the commutator on one end and on the other side you have the coil overhang. So the coils, so maybe this coil is actually connected to depending on the kind of um, uh, winding pattern, this coil may be connected to this one, then this coil may be connected to this one and so on. So they are connected at one end. So it looks like if you look at a coil it will look like this. You know, these are the, if you take a cross section, these are the sides that you are seeing on both sides and then they go to one end of the motor and, and this side is, is connected to the commutator segments, simple copper strips on which some movable brush rotates, okay. So if you want to see, understand the operation, then we should see the next diagram. which is uh, this. So you see what happens here. Oops. So you, you have say we are, we are just for understanding simplicity let us look at uh, uh, the so we have a two pole machine this is north this is south so the field flux flows like this let us say actually it will be you know they will be perpendicular. and then they will go in like this. So if you take the net axis, the field flux axis is like this. On the other hand, look at this set of coils. So you have a set of coils here and a set of coils here. So it turns out that these coils here maybe the current convention is all dots. We have a, so what happens, interestingly you see that this, suppose this turn is, this, this motor is rotating this way, right. So first from here one, this, the next picture is, uh, the next picture is 45 degree here. So it has now moved in and depending on the flux direction, this is, has, in this case we have shown this has, this has dot current means coming towards us and this has cross current, so going, so these are the current. And or if you have connected the positive terminal to this one and the negative terminal to this one, if it's, a, if it's acting as a motor, then you are connecting supplies to these. Then all the commutator segments which are connected with this brush segment are going to be positive. So therefore, all of them will have dot current here and cross current here. So, so you see that the, on, on this side of the commutator segment, so this half, everything is going to be 
dot currents and this half everything is going to be cross currents even if the rotor is rotating. So the so the current magnitude will actually actually the EM the current magnitude will change polarity as it comes to this side. So what happens as a result of this is that is that this will make the that on one side of the brush you always have so you see that if you have this sort of a coil then the then the armature that is the flux which is created due to the armature current is actually a aligned along this direction always even if the rotor is rotating and the flux due to the field coils is aligned along this so so this is so you know this is so therefore the torque is along this and the mo and the motor rotates and, and and as it rotates so for a normal dc motor the field flux is actually the the direction of the field flux, the flux is actually fixed in space and the direction that is very easy to achieve because the field coils are fixed in space they don't move but on the other hand the armature flux is also fixed in space in spite of the fact that the armature is rotating this is the beauty and to ensure that so that to, to ensure that the armature flux remains perpendicular to the field flux well they can be moved little bit by moving the brushes but that is a different uh, thing we generally don't do it so uh, so what happens is that we uh, in general if the brushes are in their so called neutral position then the armature flux is going to be perpendicular to the field flux irrespective of the fact that the, that the motor is rotating and this gives maximum torque and gives good dynamic response uh, best possible dynamic response for a given you know current driving capability and for a given mechanical property of the motor. This is why the, the DC motor is considered to be good. So, so basically this is the control configuration of a separately excited DC motor. We call a DC motor separately excited when the field is excited from a different source and the armature coil is excited from a completely different source and they are not related. You know sometimes there are other configurations in which DC motors are run for example series, shunt, etc. But in this case they are separate and this is the configuration which is used for control drives. So, what is happening here is that, so we have the armature coil, this is the armature coil which is excited by the armature voltage, so there is some armature current flowing, there is some back EMF and this is the field coil which is static and which is excited by another source of voltage called the field voltage and this is the load that the motor is driving. So, including the load and the motor shaft, the total load on the motor shaft including its own friction or any other uh, friction or inertia that the load may be having. So, this that is all that is represented by this JL and BL, TL is the load, load torque requirement. So, this is how it is to be controlled. So, on you need to have one voltage supply which will control the current in the armature and you need to have another supply which will control the current in the field for creating the kind of motion that you want to create. Now the whole question is that how do you control these voltages or these currents? So the whole question of drive is to create a source of energy, a controlled source of energy where we will be able to control these V's and I's on the field at the armature point. That will create the desired kind of motion. So. Uh, this is the well known torque speed curve, the torque speed characteristic actually it gives uh, what is known as the you know the, 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 the operating region of the motor. So as we have seen that we can either con we can either control the armature or control the field or control both of them theoretically speaking. Actually they are actually either the armature or the field is generally controlled that is there are two modes of control. And in this mode you have in this this is the mode this is the zone 
where we are having uh, armature voltage control. So, if you have armature voltage control, then uh, your torque remains constant. If you have uh, that is there is a maximum torque which is achievable at different speeds remain constant, right. So, uh, why is why does that happen because we are not doing field control. So, we are doing so the field current is constant, right. So, I f is constant. Similarly, the maximum armature current is also fixed because the field current is constant. So, uh, what will happen is that if the voltage is increased to the maximum value, then <coughs> uh, the that is for a for a given arm for a given maximum armature current I F into I A, which which is proportional to the torque, is going to be fixed. So therefore, you have a constant torque region. So you can so as the speed increases, obviously, if you have a constant torque then as the speed increases the power that you can achieve will increase up to a certain level where you have come to the maximum power that the that the machine can deliver that is your torque this maximum value of torque and the corresponding to the maximum value of armature current and the corresponding value of speed after that one cannot get one cannot get more uh, more power out of the device, but one can still increase the speed if it is desired to do so. So, then if you want to increase the speed further at the cost of uh, torque because power has to stay constant that is the maximum power which we can deliver, then we can what know what is known as the field weakening or we can uh, weaken the field. Then what will happen is that we can go to a higher speed region but the torque will fall so that the torque and the speed will product which is power will remain constant. So, the, the operating region can be divided into two parts a, a, a constant torque region and a constant power region. For industrial drives this is the region which is of more concern and so we will mainly be looking at armature voltage control of separately excited DC motors. Now, while the motor is moving several uh, modes of operation can exist. For example, so we have two things, one is torque, another is speed of the motor, right. So, depending on the speed we have two directions. So, this is the speed can be positive or negative depending on whether it is rotating clockwise or, or anti clockwise. Now, arbitrarily we call one to be forward and the other to be reversed. So, depending on whether the speed is positive or negative we have in this case we have chosen to call the positive speed as forward then negative speed becomes reverse. So, either the motor is in the forward rotating mode or in the reverse rotating mode. Now, while it is rotating forward if we have a we generate a torque which is also in the forward direction in the same clockwise or anti clockwise direction then the then the motor will accelerate will try to drive the load more and more in the forward direction. So, in that mode where the speed is forward where the speed and the torque are in the same direction we call it a, the motoring mode. So, these two here the speed is forward and the torque is also forward and here the speed is reverse and the torque is also reverse. So, sometimes we call it forward motoring and we call this reverse motoring. Compared to that there is another mode called braking. So, what happens here is that the speed is still forward, but the torque has reversed. So, so actually what is happening? torque creates acceleration. So, if the torque is reverse then there is a net reverse acceleration. So, the speed is the speed is coming down. So, the speed is forward it is still moving, but it is slowing down because of the negative acceleration right. So, that mode of operation we call braking. 
and this basically shows that under what kind of conditions this you know the supply voltage polarities and the back EMF this is should be B. So, the supply voltage and the back EMF polarities how they are related. So, in this case you know in this case what happens let us take the let us take motoring the the back EMF is created because there are some coils which are which are rotating within the field flux. So, there is some induced EMF. So, in this case when this motoring the power source is actually delivering power into the motor. So, so that can be seen that if current direction is like this then this source is actually receiving power this this back EMF source is receiving power which is being delivered by the external source. So, that is why it is motoring and that power which is absorbed which is seen I mean seen to be absorbed by the back EMF is actually causing is actually re representing the conversion of electrical energy into mechanical energy which is creating the speed which is creating the back EMF. So, that power is going to create the speed which creates the back EMF. So, that is why you have motoring similarly here here also the look at the current direction the current direction is like this. So, the external source is delivering power into the back EMF source. So, the motor is receiving power exactly the opposite happens here. Here the back EMF source is is delivering power into the external source why because this is maintained smaller than the back EMF. So, the moment this is maintained smaller the current direction will change actually there are going to be some inductances and this change will involve some LDI by DT effect, but generally if the LDI by DT effect we do not consider then the current will eventually reverse if this is maintained less than this and there then you can see that it is a back EMF source which is delivering power into the external source. So, we are actually getting back some power from the motor actually this power is coming from the kinetic energy of the motor. So, this this is and while the motor deli gives up its kinetic energy to give back electrical energy into the source it is obviously slowing down because it is losing kinetic energy. So, therefore, the speed is coming down therefore, it is braking, but because the loss of the kinetic energy is actually being converted to an electrical power and being fed back to a source therefore, it is called regenerative braking. This power this this kinetic energy could also have been you know wasted in uh, things like resistances uh, that is possible. So, in, in which case it would still be braking, but it will be a different kind of braking as we shall see. So, you see that depending on the torque and speed quadrants we can have four different kinds of operation one is forward motoring. So, forward motoring then then forward braking then reverse motoring then reverse braking. Now, so we see the three kinds of braking that we are talking about here what happens is that you see this source this back EMF source oops. So, this back EMF source which is the motor is delivering power into the external source which is the battery. The field is just connected. So, this is here this is the regenerative braking situation. Alternatively we could have what is known as a dynamic braking in the sense that uh, uh, in the sense that we could at any point of time we could disconnect the source and then connect what is known as a resistance a breaking resistance here. Then this current would have been dissipated in this resistor as heat. So, that is uh, there you are not gaining the power, but you are actually wasting the power as heat anyway this is called therefore, it is not regenerative it is called dynamic breaking. Next. Uh, yeah, we could have if you want very rapid braking, uh, then we can use a method called plugging, where not only is the uh, voltage kept in degenerative braking, the voltages are still opposing. 
but the supply voltage is less therefore the back EMF source drives power into the supply voltage. On the other hand here you see that the supply voltage look at the polarities plus minus minus so plus minus plus minus so therefore these two this this EMF source and this EMF source are actually aiding. So therefore a large huge large current will flow and so this is also delivering power look at the current direction and this is also delivering power and all that power will 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 result in a very high sudden picky current which will which will actually so the energy is going to be dissipated within the winding uh, as heat. So the motor is going to since the current is see the, remember that the flux direction is different but the current has completely reversed. So therefore there is a and there is a large current so there is a large breaking torque and the motor will come to rest very fast but uh, that a lot of heat will be created in the winding. So now, uh, so now let us come to the point that how we can, so we basically want to drive the voltage source VA. So sometimes we want to keep it more than the back EMF source so that it drives current into the motor and the motor accelerates. Sometimes we want to reduce that and uh, so that the motor can decelerate and it can to, I mean give back its kinetic its, its mechanical power to be converted into electrical power and sometimes uh, so we want so 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 in other words we need to have a method of controlling the supply voltage to the motor armature now how do we do that so there are various ways of doing that so we first look at some you know what are what are, what are known as line frequency uh, converter drives so what do you mean by line frequency so what we mean is that you here you have line frequency AC. AC supply to 50 hertz. Now and we have see we have connected a basically this is a rectifier. This is a rectifier this is a so what is known as a freewheeling diode and this is the armature. This is the armature. So what we can, what we are going to do is, we are going to, we are going to take the AC here and then rectify it to be a DC. So here it will become a DC at this point. And not only that, because it's half controlled, so. The, the magnitude of this DC can be controlled by controlling the firing instance. In this case, we are, we are demonstrating through what are known as thyristors, so or rather to put them on. So firing uh, instance. So by controlling the firing, we can control the supply voltage act to the motor and we can vary it. But note that we cannot have in this case, first of all, in this kind of, these are these diodes and thyristors, they are all, uh, they are all, as far as current is concerned, they are all unidirectional devices. So here current cannot be reversed, right. Uh, so therefore, the current is always passing like this. You know, now the current in through these devices are always in these directions. So in the positive cycle, it is passing like this. In the negative cycle, when this voltage becomes negative, it it, it may pass like this. So you see that the supply current is sometimes going. Supply current, as far as the supply is concerned, the current is switching. But as far as, but the current direction through the switches can never change. That is because of the basic nature of the switches. So what happens is that the current through the armature coil that direction remains fixed. Although the terminal voltage, 
the terminal voltage across the armature can become uh, in this case they, they actually cannot become negative because of the fact that these two are diodes. So, so here is a source in which we can have a positive voltage applied along with a positive current uh, and and the uh, magnitude of the voltage can be changed right so so if we essentially have we can have only have positive current and we can only have positive voltage so it is a one quadrant control but within this quadrant we can so we can only do motoring here that too in one direction but by controlling the voltage voltage we can change the amount of the torque and the speed are always same in the same direction but their magnitudes can be controlled right these are you know some of the current waveforms which we can skip for now then we'll have what are known as fully controlled converters so here now you will notice that that all the four devices are active which means that now current is still unidirectional because current through these devices can only uh, move in one direction still so so still current is unidirectional but now because of the inductance if we, we it, it, it is possible that the current will remain in this direction as mentioned while the terminal voltages will change they can go negative they can go positive or negative so now voltage can be voltage across the motor can be reversed but current cannot be reversed which means that we have a two quadrant control so we have two quadrant control where we have the current is, is still always positive but the voltage is sometimes positive and sometimes negative so uh, so you have you know what is known as two quadrant operation if you if we want to have four quadrant this is a this is so you see that we have used all four as uh, we have used all four we have used a fully converter drive but still we cannot basically achieve better than uh, two quadrant but if with only one converter now it is possible that we connect two converters and then achieve uh, yes so you see what we are essentially doing here is the fact that we have connected two converters so we have previously we had seen only this part of it so one converter connected to a motor all four are active or rather fully controlled so then one converter gives you on this one quadrant so the ia is positive now on the other hand if you put another converter with the terminals totally with, the, with, with, with just opposite polarity then you will get another two quadrant operation which is in this quadrant now if we if we connect them in parallel and then sometimes whenever I want depending on which quadrant operation I want I use either this converter or this converter so in this way it is it is, it is possible to achieve uh, it's possible to achieve four quadrant operation using line frequency converter but only thing is to be remembered is that though it is it is it's quite simple uh, to it's quite simple to uh, use these line frequency converters but they but because they are 
frequencies are low, sometimes they give rise to you know what is known as uh, torque ripples because when you are going to switch on, swi switch one set of switches on and then switch another set of switches off, but you cannot ex you know, cannot very closely maintain the current, but the pulsation of the current is actually determined by the frequency of the supply. So sometimes this may result in unacceptable uh, transients in torque and speed. So in such a case, we have to use other kinds of converters. Before we see such converters in the next lesson, let us look at uh, typical control loops that uh, are uh, used to have you know adjustable speed drives using this kind of uh, line frequency converters. So, we uh, so line frequency converters to put uh, simply are, are rather simple circuits which operates at line frequency which means that they are basically AC to DC converters. So, the AC line frequency 50 hertz is their operational frequency. Uh, their dynamic performances are not that stringent basically because of the fact that the frequency is low. So therefore, there is some amount of uh, current pulsation and therefore, uh, torque pulsation. So this gives rise to a little bit of poor dynamic performance. So they are, they are widely used for adjustable speed control because in adjustable speed control, we anyway do not have dynamic performance requirements. So the simplicity comes as an advantage. And inherently, these converters have uh, two quadrant control. So, if you want to have four quadrant control, then you have to have uh, you have to have uh, two converters in you can say you can say in anti-parallel, as we have seen. Uh, contrasted to that, we have uh, contrasted to that we have switch mode converters, which are much more complex. We'll see them in the next lesson. They have higher frequency of operation and therefore they are they have higher dynamic performance and therefore they are generally used for uh, servo drives and in inherently use they actually use a kind of form called uh, switch mode converters or basically uh, PWM inverters used for DC to DC conversion. So uh, they, are, they are used for four quadrant controls which are typically required in servo drives. So anyway, let's we let us look at the control architecture now. Now that you have seen that what is the basic power electronic circuit that can create a variable voltage source, let us see how we can use that in, in controlling the speed. So here we have the standard control loop. Uh, so we have this is the motor which is the plant right and we have this is the reference input. So this is the voltage input which says what is the speed that we want to have and obviously it's a, since it is a feedback configuration, so therefore the speed is sensed, speed is sensed using various kinds of sensors, they could be taco generators or they could be shaft angle encoders or they could be resolvers various kinds of sensors are used here for speed sensing. This is compared and this is the error voltage, this is the error signal which is fed to the speed controller. So ba based on the error voltage, the speed controller according to it could be a PI controller. So the speed controller gener generates a command signal for a certain armature voltage, right. So this, this this commanded armature voltage signal is now realized. This, are, this is the actual armature voltage, average armature voltage which is applied at the armature and this is the commanded uh, armature voltage by the speed controller. So the internal, this converter electronics actually generates these firing pulses which decide the times, the time durations for which these switches are going to be on and off. So based on this command, they actually generate some firing pulses and 
once these firing pulses are applied, so the switches become on and off and therefore a particular armature voltage gets applied to the DC motor. So this is the, the very simple way of controlling a DC motor for an adjustable speed drive, okay. So we move on, if we, so since it is a, it's a control uh, system, so it is, it is nice to look at the basic block diagram. So first we look at how the plant transfer function looks like. It is actually very simple to understand and this will, this will show why a DC motor is so preferred for control. So this simplicity that, 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 a, that a motor basically, you know, we want to have, see, we want to control speed. So speed is our output. Now what produces speed? Torque produces speed. So what is the relationship between torque and speed? So if you see from this side, so this is the, my output quantity. So there is an electromechanical torque or developed torque and there is a load torque. This, the difference between the two is the net torque. This is the net torque which is going to accelerate or decelerate the shaft. So the relationship between that is given by a linear transfer function which is given by its moment of inertia. So we have, you know, J omega dot plus B omega is equal to T net. This sort of an equation we have. So, so this part is linear. But remember that the torque generation itself, we are trying to control the armature. But the torque generation itself is, torque is flux into current. So it is basically this, the flux or the field into the armature current. But the beauty of the DC motor is that because the by its construction and by its, by its brushes as we have said, the current, the armature current and the field current are always orthogonal. So therefore, even if we vary the armature current, the field axis flux remains constant because it is perpendicular, right? It has no component on that side. So therefore, we need to, for control, we need to only consider, we need to only control the armature current and the control law will be linear, right? This decoupling of the armature and the field axis because of their perpendicularity is a is the reason why DC motor based control is so simple and preferred, right? So this is armature current and this is a torque constant which includes the flux. So in this constant we have absorbed, so the, so the torque developed is actually proportional to the armature current because the field current is constant and orthogonal. Now how do you get the armature current? So the armature current is again the net EMF, net EMF is applied armature voltage minus back EMF flowing through an RL circuit. So therefore, we, uh, we have LDI by DT plus RI is equal to net EMF which is VA minus back EMF. So this equation is basically realized here. And this back EMF is in turn proportional to the speed by this constant KB which again depends on the flux. So it is constant. So in this KB, we also have the flux. So the fluxes are included in these two relations right and so and this is the reference voltage and this is the depending on the reference voltage we can give give the armature current so you see that because of the construction of the dc motor the dc motor can be very easily described as a linear system and therefore its its control is very simple and can be easily realized using things like pi controller so if we, this is the, this is the plan transfer function. So if we want to have a closed loop system, then this is the plan transfer function. Remember that we have just seen and we have taken the plan transfer function, actually not that, this is the plan transfer function. This is the controller. In this case, we have taken a proportional controller. We can also take a PI controller and this is the feedback loop. So this is the speed sensor. This is the speed sensor gain and this is a reference voltage. So the closed loop is just the open loop plant and the controller in the forward path and the feedback path transfer function as we have seen many control loops so it is easy to understand. So you see that what we are trying to control is that we are trying to control the, the applied armature voltage based on the speed error. Right, that's what we are doing. Uh, so, if you look at a total control loop, 
then it will look like this. See, this is a this is a this is an overall control loop. So this is the armature. This is the taco generator or the speed feedback. Sometimes you use a filter here to get rid of noise. This is a real implementation. So here you have a speed controller. This is a typical symbol which is used for PI controls because this picture gives the error versus time characteristics of PI controllers. Often you have inside the speed control loop you also have a current control loop because you sometimes you want to control the torque itself. So there so, so, so therefore you will have a current limiter. So this is the this actually gives a current reference and that goes through a current controller uh, that that is applied as the current reference. So if you give too much current command then that will be limited. Now you see that this is the this is the converter which is supplying to the motor. The, the, the converter current is tapped here either using a Hall effect sensor or, or using a resistor. So this current is being compared. So this is an inner current loop just like a cascade control. This is the outer speed loop. Inside you have an inner current loop. This will give much more stiff control. Transient response will improve. On the other hand, the field level is, the, the field is also being adjusted such that the IA array drops. See this is, this is IA. So, so, so this is IA array. So the excitation to the field winding, which is, this is the field winding, is adjusted such that uh, the such that this this IARA drop is actually compensated. So this is VA, this is minus IARA, IA into RA. So that is that is compared and such that this is the so, so the so the equivalent amount of uh, EMF is generated. So, so in the steady state the flux will be such that the that there is no uh, variation in the speed due to this IARA drop. Right, so so this is the this is uh, so some, some amount of field control in, in that sense. So this looks like a, this is a you know a slightly more complex uh, current loop. So we'll this picture shows that how voltages can be varied. So if you have a full converter, which con which we had previously seen. Then you know, depending on this is the point. These are the points of time where the oops. These are the points of time where the uh, oops. Points of time where these so the switches are being put on. So the voltage across the armature is actually of this form. Follow the white mark. So you see that if, so the voltage across the armature is this followed by this, followed by this, followed by this. So you see that the average voltage is somewhat positive here. On the other hand, if this, if this would have, been, would have fired at this point, that is switches, then we would have got this. So then I will draw it with a different color that then the voltages would have been the uh, voltage across the armature would have been this. So you see that it would have had a the average value of the voltage would have been negative. Do you see that? So this is what I was telling that you, if you have a full converter then by changing the switching instant if you switch here you get an average value which is positive if you switch here you get an average value which is negative. But the current remains unidirectional, right? So therefore, you have either breaking or you have either breaking or. So these are the current waveforms. We'll not. This is a single. This is a semi converter. In a semi converter, because the diodes will switch off, the moment the 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 voltage crosses zero, the diodes which are there in the semiconductor uh, in the semi converter are going to switch off. So therefore, you cannot have negative voltage. So therefore, you can only have positive voltage from 0 from Vmax to 0. So therefore you have single quadrant operation this we have mentioned. So we come to the lesson summary. So what we have seen are basic concepts of DC motor drives and the basic reason why DC motors are considered good and this wide uh, popularity. 
we have seen the basic line frequency AC DC converter driven adjustable, adjustable speed drives. We have seen various quadrants of operation. Uh, we have not seen this switch mode DC DC converter driven servo drives, which we will see in the next lesson. But we have seen how the uh, four quadrants of operation, what they mean and, and how braking and uh, motoring can be achieved by, by, by reversing the voltage in the, in the converter driven drive. So thank you very much. In the next lesson, we are going to look at uh, switch mode converter driven DC and BLDC drives. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to lesson 33 of the course on industrial automation and control. So in this lesson, we are going to look at DC drives, we will continue with DC drives, but we will look at DC drives which are supplied by a different kind of power source called switch mode converters. And then we will, once we do that and we understand how it works, we are going to extend the DC drives to what are known as brushless DC drives, which are very popular nowadays. So we are going to first look, look at DC DC converters and their operations. Then we are going to look at these DC DC converter fed DC drives. We are going to look at their single quadrant, two quadrant operations. And finally, we are going to ta take a look at BLDC drives or brushless DC drives. So our instruction objective for today are the following. So first we, we will, after the lesson, the student will be able to understand the basic concept of how a switch mode converter works, what sort of a power source it is and if it is connected across the armature of the DC motor, then what happens? during its operation. This is the first instructional objective. The second is that, so once these various kinds of switchings go on, so we will see how the DC motor can be made to motor or it can be made to brake, so that we will understand. Next is, we will also see that, you know, there are some kinds of drives which do not require uh, which may not require uh, all four quadrants and so there may be a single quadrant drive requirement or there may be a two quadrant drive requirement in which case it is not really necessary to have a four quadrant drive and we can simplify the circuitry so we will see them. Thank you. 